Hi everyone, welcome back to another Flight Time video by Game Fishing Ireland. Um, flying device here is a raised fly variant and it's proven to be one of my top uh, sea bass patterns for for Southern Ireland. Uh, it's a small bait fish imitation and um, it's been really successful for me. Uh, uh, how do we tie this cracker? So the hook we're going to use is a Arix and it's an SA280 minnow size 4. Okay, that's what we've got in the vise there. Um, the thread, which I'm starting to run low on, is Semperfly uh, white waxed in triot. I'm just going to come in here, just going to leave a little bit of space where, where the wing and head is going to go. Just work my way down a small bit. Just enough that I can snip off this tag end. <clears throat> the body I'm using is a pearl flat braid. I'm just going to tie it in and run it down. Just going to try and measure it up there. And this is, I'm pretty sure, uh, one I had a while. It's a guideline flat braid actually, but it's very nice, ties in very flat. Let's bring that back up. <clears throat> so we're just gonna wrap our flat braid in, touching turns up the body. That should do it. And we're just gonna lock it in two turns behind, two or three in front. And we're gonna snip that off on this side. Great. Okay. Don't worry if there's any little bits you'd catch them with the thread. Just going to come forward just to form a bit of a base for my wing and come back onto the flat braid. Um, first part of the wing is white uh, bucktail. <clears throat> and when you're using white bucktail, um, if, I'm tying in a, if I was tying a tail, this fly has no tail. I would always work from the tip here. It seems a bit softer and um, it's not inclined to spread out so much. but I want the first wing here to help support the wings that are going on top, so I'm actually going to work from the base. Um, this is quite a soft bucktail anyway, but um, so, some of them will display a bit more. Uh, this one I think is a hairline, a uh, northern bucktail, and we're going to take off just a small pinch. <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's hairline, large northern bucktail. So. Got a pinch here now. I want to straighten these tips up a little bit on this and take out any any stragglers if I can. So that's not bad. So I just want this to go just beyond the bend. Okay, just beyond the bend. So it's a pre-waxer. I'm just going to add another little bit. Great tip you always pick up from the the guru himself, Davy McPhail. Just remember to wax your tread. So just adding in. A little bit here. I'm going to give two turns on top. And I'm just going to put a little flatten out. See how it's sitting. Line it up. Make sure it's all sitting on top. And I'm just going to trap it down. I'm pretty happy with that. And I want it to, to spread out a little bit. As I say. Because it's going to have to support other materials. And we're keeping the fly slim. We're not using a lot of this. So. <clears throat> as I say. We're just going to keep keep the pieces of material quite slim. So next I'm going to add some sparkle here. So it's a basically it's a pearl flash. Um, this one is by of course Sabai. <clears throat> so it's Sabai Pearl Sparkle here. Our new sparkle here in pearl colour. And I'm just going to okay so Going to trim this a little bit, keep it looking a little bit better. It isn't trying to move about when it's dry, so we just want this extended basically the length of our first wing or under wing, if you like. So bring that back up. I'm just going to trim it off just slightly longer. It's quite a slight angle. Not going to make a huge difference there because it's such a small amount of material. Okay. I'm just going to wet my thumb and finger just to keep it out of the way a bit. Nice. 
Now, I'm going to add my first uh, underwing, <clears throat> which is a little piece of the bucktail. I'm going to take it from a little bit further up the, the tail here because I don't really want this to splay out so much. Again, just a very small amount, very thin. You're really only taking a few strands. Trim it off down by the roots. <coughs> Again, I'm going to just line this up a little bit by hand so some, some of the strands are a bit longer than the others. And you'll still have a little taper, but we don't want it too much. Just remove any bits that, that we don't need. That does it bad. I'm just going to invert, or what do we say here, and then turn it upside down. There's one straggly strand there that's in the way. So again, we're just going back towards the bend, just covering the, the barb. I'm going to give it two turns. Two. I just want to make sure it's all sitting up on top. Not too much to the side. Let's have a look at that. That's not bad. And locate my scissors. Trim off any any waste. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to add the next part of our wing, which is bucktail again. This is a fluorescent chartreuse. Again, it's the hairline one. And I'm going to take this one from a little bit further up the, the tail as well. Um, about halfway up on this one, I'd say, would be fine. You can see this one is a bit more brittle looking, so this one spreads out a bit more than the white one. It's just got to really look at your materials. So, again, I'm just lining up some tips here. Are looking right and remove any extra ones that I don't need. And that's it again, keeping it quite slim. So I'm going to line this one up to just to the end of the flash. Okay, that looks about right. I'm going to just add a little bit of wax to my tread. That's nice. So even though it's, it's a pre-waxed tread, no harm in adding a little bit of extra wax just for a little bit of grip on this bucktail. Okay, so that's looking reasonably nice. Let's get one in underneath and let's not give it a little trim off. Now with bucktail, it's no harm as you go along to add a little bit of glue or lacquer to the bucktail, just to make sure it grips. Okay, so that's all our bucktail on, and that that will suck down in there. Now we're going to add another underwing or throat piece, and I'm going to use some white fox. Okay, so if you have Arctic fox tail, something like that, this is a nice piece of white fox I got from a friend. Who wasn't using it? Just pull off a nice piece here. I like the fox for the the underbelly or throat of the fly. It just has a nice bit of density to it, and it makes it look like a nice white body that you'd expect on the underside of of a bait fish. Um, it's quite fluffy on the base, so take Barbie's comb. This was out of a Barbie set, I think, anyway. And um, just to point out, the Barbie set wasn't for me. And uh, <coughs> line it up. And just pull out all your fluff bits. I'm only pulling the fluff out from the base. I, I want to, if there's a little bit up through it, I want that because I want that, that density, that volume, if you like. So line it up around the length of the first underwing. Two turns and a turn. And keep it if you can on the underside and not falling too much to the side. Let me snip that off. 
that's what it looks like. You could, if you wanted, add some chartreuse flash here at this stage as well, but um, I'm quite happy with the amount of flash that's on this. So, next, I'm going to add a little bit of chartreuse nyet. Um, this is really good quality stuff from Big Streamers, which, <laughs> believe it or not, I won on a Facebook um, competition on a, on a, on a flight time group. And now you can see it's getting used. So don't often win things in, in raffles, but don't forget lucky. So again, you can see this is nice material. And again, we're going to get our little comb and we're just going to comb out the fluff from the end. Okay, now we're probably not tying in that length. So you might be wondering why am I combing out that fluff? And it's because I make it more than one wing out of this. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to go up to the tips and I'm just going to withdraw and line it up again. Okay, and then I might repeat that process once more. So basically I'm just lining up these tips. We're still going to have a little taper and that looks about right. Okay, so again, we're just going to extend a little bit beyond our fluorescent chartreuse bucktail. Now you'll see is when this tied in, it flattens down, and again, we're just starting to build up that shape. So, a couple of turns, uh, one or two in the front. I'm just going to snip that off. Okay, so we don't throw this away. Just to, as you can see, if you keep teasing it out and working with it. It's great stuff. You can start to build another wing. So we can use this on another fly and you know the other end on another fly. So once you get the idea. Um, just just to say that if you're new to using the materials for sword butterflies, so I'm going to add another wing. Um, again, big streamers nyet. This color is called pistachio, and it's a nice sort of light olive color. Something that you'd see in sword water bait fish, maybe, and. We get our comb, and again, we're going to repeat the same process. So, I just combed out all the fluff from that end, and then I'm going to line up the tips. This is not quite as straight as the, as the previous piece, but if you really wanted to, you could get a hair straightener and straighten it, and it'll make it very flat. I'm quite happy once I start fishing with the fly. Um, It'll take a nice shape. So we're going to extend this just beyond our chartreuse. And just a couple of turns. Turn in front. See how it's all sitting. You can see our shape of our fly starting to come together now. Snip that off. Again, I'm just going to add a little bit of, just a little bit of, a little bit of glue or lacquer at this stage. Doesn't do any harm. Let that soak in through the materials. So it helps stop anything from slipping out. So we're almost there. We can add one more piece of the materials, the overwing. And this is uh, a flash by Crafty Fly, and it's black and green. So the original pattern had peacock curl over the top, and peacock curl really is good. But it is a somewhat brittle material, and it can break off if you're catching a lot of fish. And of course, we all hope to catch plenty of fish. So I'm just going to snip off 
plastic piece of this and I find this a reasonably good replacement for for peacock curl. So I'm gonna extend to the, to the end of the tail. Just pinch and loop it on. Two and pull that back. Just gonna wet my thumb and forefinger just to see how it's sitting. And there's always likely to be one little bit sticking up or down, so you can trim those what I call the curly bits. Let's see how it's looking. It's looking pretty pretty close to what I want. I'm sure how your side's looking. It's not looking too bad. And um, at this stage now, we can finish off. So you can whip finish if you want. I'm just going to add a couple of hitches because I'm going to be coat, coating all of this with a resin. Okay. So a couple of hitches just make it white. Head look as white as it needs to be. And just give it two hitches. So the original fly had jungle cock cheeks. Um, this one doesn't so now for the for the resin if you like i'm actually going to use uv not sense so you've probably seen this stuff before um it's by loon i'm just going to add a drop over the top i just like to use this for smaller flies from attaching eyes let's remove that now uh, because i just find that the little applicator on it's handy I tend to just get the right amount. So just grab my, my needle here. And basically, I'm just going to spread that. It starts to, to flow around anyway. I'm just going to spread that all around the the, the head of the, the fly. And I'm going to add some three mil eyes. I'm not sure who, who made these. But they're just silver. Three mil. You could probably get away with four mil eyes on this, but... I'm just going to use three minutes. So I'm going to tilt this over and attach an eye. I'm going to rotate back on the other side. Just needs a little bit of a spread there. I'm going to get another eye. Right. And I'm going to attach the other eye. Right. Now just we can have a look and see how they're looking. Sometimes they slide up or down a little bit. So you can see these ones are sliding a little bit. So at this stage now I'm going to keep rotating the device once I get them in position. That just stops the resin from running all over the place and the eyes moving. I'm going to come with my UV torch and I'm going to hit them now. One wants to go somewhere else. I'm going to hit them a blast of the UV light. Now we're going to get another drop of my UV knot sense. I'm going to put that up on top. I'm going to get my needle. I'm just going to run that all around. And an extra tiny bit just over the top of this. And you can see now that's kind of coating the eyes and making the head more rounded. Needle and again, I'm trying to keep rotating the eyes on this fly. And there you go. If you think it's a bit tacky, I don't find it too bad. You can give it one touch of uh, clear lacquer or varnish, and there's your your finished. Raise variants, um, so just using stick on eyes and or green and black flash instead of the peacock curl, and adding a bit of a bit of naiad over the bucktail, just to help with the shape. So um, stay tuned for more fly tying videos in the future.